Okay, this video explores ways artists have used distortion to add to the emotional intensity of the work or communicate a certain perspective. Hopefully, it will give you some ideas and inspiration as you complete this assignment. The first strategy for distortion is manipulation of form, such as changing in size, stretching, compacting. In this painting, the overall pose is really calm. Um, but because Picasso chose to distort the eyes and make them much bigger than normal, the portrait has kind of a startled or surprised feel to it. Also, large ears and nose seem to indicate that the other senses are activated as well, and they're also on high alert. Chantelle Joffe, she elongates the back of the woman, and the hair also cascades down the front. This accentuates her protective pose. The mother almost completely envelops the child, keeping the child safe. Also notice her right eye is distorted much bigger than her left. This heightens the confrontational direct gaze out at the viewer. It pushes us away from her baby, I think. In this painting, the entire figure is elongated. Arms are longer than usual. The figure is thin, narrow, almost becoming yet another vertical stripe, just like the background. The figure does not feel strong and confident, but instead it feels rather hesitant and also unsure. Adding to this feeling, the large hand on the forehead, a gesture that's often associated with te tentativeness, the forehead stretches to meet the hand further, accentuating this gesture. This guitar player is a very melancholy guitar player. Caso pushes his head down further than it would ever go usually. It feels like he has the weight of the world on his shoulders. Also, the limbs are exceptionally angular, especially his left arm, making him feel almost like a broken man. A bit more subtle, this Lucian Freud figure droops in disappointment. The long shape of his head, curving to her left, gives the figure a sense of defeat, of disappointment. And this Lucian Freud is a really beat up guy. His jaw distorts to the right, like he just sustained a punch, and the forehead takes up most of the, most of the canvas and becomes kind of like a defensive shield against even, even more blows. Okay, John Kieran uses distortion slightly differently than the previous examples. Um, he's making a political point here. His figures remind of fashion models and advertising, but he distorts what we associate with attractiveness to an extreme. So instead of slender arms, hers look far too skinny. Her neck is absurdly long. Both people smiling in here, the smiles are way too big and too white. It's kind of startling. Taken to this extreme, these figures become grotesque and slightly monstrous. I think Kieran is questioning our media-inspired taste and our notion of what is beautiful. Same idea with this figure. She has all the makings of an elegant older woman with a lyrical pose, a slender profile. But in the extreme, she looks rickety and somewhat unhealthy. Okay, um, this Kieran obviously emphasizes elements long celebrated by the media and makes them ridiculous. Uh, I don't think I really need to point out all of them. Um, but notice her pose is, it's energetic, but she is so contorted that it looks like it would really hurt her spine to be in this position. Second strategy is manipulation of placement of form or, or where different elements are in the composition. For example, um, Picasso captures some of the whirlwind topsy-turvy feeling of a romantic kiss. The embrace here is so powerful that the female's eyes rotate to right angles and the lips and the nose become an interlocking, undulating, undulation of curvy flesh. In fact, it is somewhat hard to see where one lip ends and another lip begins. Yu Chen moves the eyes to distant sides of the head and places a second mouth at the base of the neck. Um, the familiar elements of the face are rendered from disjointed and incongruous perspectives. The overall effect is surreal and reminds how we often read the expressions of others, only in glimpses, looking at one feature and then at another, and then getting 
and then building kind of an incomplete picture from all these different stimuli. This change in placement is subtle. His left eye is slightly lower than his right, which makes his furrowed brow look even more furrowed. And his mouth is skewed, giving a feeling of questioning, a feeling of skepticism, uncertainty. So the third thing I want to talk about is ways to increase emotional impact of distortion. You have your distortions, like what are some other devices you can use, such as paintbrush strokes, composition, expression. For brush stroke, uh, Francis Bacon's brushwork feels really, really aggressive. The, the bold white paint slash below the ear kind of propels the head like an uppercut and the splattered red paint feels like blood. Both make the distortions feel very animated and also very violent. More bacon, more struggle. Thin lines scratch at the eyes and mouth and blurred edges erase the hair and face. Bacon in both of these images captures much of the brutal side to humanity. Van Gogh makes small distortions which become amplified by his brushwork. If you look at the brow, for example, it is enlarged slightly. Although this is just a small adjustment, his brushwork follows the contours down the forehead and makes the brow even more pronounced. The eyes peer out from under this avalanche of paint brush marks. The exaggerated waviness of the jackets also becomes more so with the curving brushwork. Freud paints his figures with big blobs of color, which is really similar to value shapes that you're going to be exploring with this assignment. And his figures often feel like they're made from lumpy clay. Each divot and each pit become emphasized. In a way, like Bacon, he captures the hits and bumps we accumulate through life. Composition. Coffee often positions her figures at the bottom of the canvas. She uses that device in a number of different paintings. In this image, light is coming from far overhead through a grate or skylight. The, the figure feels trapped and apart, yet still illuminated and warm by this light. The pers um, this perspective places the viewer very low, possibly even on the floor. And the figure looms overhead, giving an uneasy quality to the piece. Um, whenever I look at this as a viewer, I feel like I'm just gaining consciousness. And then I'm seeing this intimidating character and I'm not quite able to anticipate what is coming next. Um, finally, the expression you use will tell the viewer a lot about how to read your portrait. Try a lot of different expressions would be my best advice when looking into your, di into your distorting object. Move your eyeballs, look in different directions. Move your mouth, move your forehead, your eyebrows to find a number of different poses that will work for you. And in the end, exact rendering is very important in art, but distortion gives you a powerful tool to psychologically charge your work. Good luck with your own distortion and making a portrait full of dynamic emotion.